Hello everyone. So I did something different this week. I painted a mural with the help of my friend Kaylee and I did get some video footage. I didn't film the entire thing because I was a little nervous, you know, leaving my camera there with my back turned the whole time. So I just like got some smaller shots. It's a pretty high traffic area where I painted the mural. So last week on Friday, somebody broke the window at Maiden Lane and Maiden Lane is this fabulous cocktail bar that I've been going to because I live in the area. Also, there's no other place like it in Windsor. I don't know how many people follow me that are from Windsor, but like Maiden Lane is like kind of the only place to go. It's kind of the best place to go. It's the only place I want to go for like, if I want to get a little cocktail or have like a little charcuterie board, there's literally nobody else in the city doing it like them. I have been there so many times in the past year I believe I'm considered a regular. My boyfriend and I always go there and like every holiday, every birthday, any celebration, we're pretty much there. Also because it's like walking distance and who loves not driving? Me, I love not driving. But you know, it's just like one of my favorite spots because there's literally nothing like it in Windsor. For context, for those who don't know Windsor, Ontario, I believe Stephen Colbert described Windsor as Canada's rectum or Canada's anus. Before we can harness geothermal power, we have to take the planet's temperature with the geothermometer. And I have no idea where the Earth's rectum is. He says in the footnote at the bottom of the page, as suggesting where the rectum is, Windsor, Canada. And since then, everyone has referred to Windsor as that. I don't think it's bad because I'm from here um, and this is home to me and how dare you disrespect the city I'm from. <laughs> it's a working class city, it's pretty humble. It's the most Southern city in Canada and it's right across the river from Detroit. So it takes me like to get from my house, my doorstep to Detroit, driving time five to 15 minutes, really depending on the border traffic, sometimes 30 if it's bad and sometimes an hour if it's very backed up and there's like a sports game. Living next to a large city like Detroit is very cool. I don't think people realize that there's something on the other side of Detroit, but there is and it's the little shithole Windsor. Just kidding, it's not a shithole. It's something like 300,000 people, so it's not tiny, but I think it's like so spread out because it's so car centric. For context, the automotive industry, Detroit, you know, obviously there's like a lot of automotive history here as time has moved on and everyone has been outsourcing their manufacturing to countries with cheaper labor. We lost a lot of that. So that's where I'm from for context. I'm living with my parents. I'm sure I've mentioned this before because oh my god the cost of living is outrageously expensive. I'm just getting on a tangent. I haven't even mentioned the mural and like I feel like three minutes or something like that. <laughs> Anyways I just wanted to give some context. They got broken into on Friday. Somebody like smashed a window, stole an iPad, some of their card readers. This person also stole like alcohol obviously because there's alcohol there. <laughs> he climbed out of the window he broke into I believe. Friday they also launched their new menu. I had like three or four cocktails from their new menu. Amazing. You know that sucks I got broken into as they're launching like their new menu. So we went in. Mark and Sarah own the place and they are so sweet. The broken window also it's huge. The broken window is huge. And I just like asked Mark and Sarah like hey would it be okay if I painted over it? And they said yes. And I was like, cool. So the next day I literally sent drafts of like what I wanted to do. I had a few other drafts in mind too, but you know, I figured I would really tie it into like what was being made there. I wanted the outside of it to reflect like the inside of the place. I started off with just like drawing things that were inspired by their menu. My favorite thing to eat there is the charcuterie. It is so good. I haven't tried like everything there and it's because like the charcuterie is so good that anytime I'm hungry and I'm there, I'm like, okay, charcuterie instantly. What inspired me to make the whole thing was I was sitting in my kitchen drawing. I was in Portugal last year and I had a bunch of tinned fish sitting on my counter that I haven't eaten because they're too precious to eat apparently. So I saw the tinned fish sitting there and I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, they serve tinned fish. They also serve oysters. This is perfect. I'll add other things. They always have like little lemon citrusy garments on their drinks. They also always have fresh honey with the charcuterie boards and they like have it with the honeycomb and it is oh it is so good obviously olives because olives are like essential snap peas and then also cheese and then garlic because like I don't know all the flavors I feel like very much mix with each other they're known for their cocktails and they're known for like their wine at the top of the mural I wanted to do like a bunch of wiggly cocktail glasses I say wiggly because not all of them are perfect I figured I wanted to do like some cocktail glasses along the top to like really like tie everything in together putting the cocktail glasses at the top was intentional this area is where the farmers market is every Saturday and there's a lot of children's at farmers markets just gonna happen and so I figured I would put the cocktail glasses at the top 
top as like a little bit of a divider so it didn't feel very heavy and also because I know kids love murals and I know kids love color they're gonna go right up to it and what's that child height I want like the sardines the peas the oyster the garlic the orange the recognizable things to be more child height I don't really want like the cocktail glasses at child height you know I want to show them an orange because they get excited when they see an orange I think like public art you have to really consider like the context of who's going to view it how it's going to be viewed and like at what distance it's going to be viewed after I came up with the design I messaged Mark and Sarah and I was like hey let me know what you think about it do you want me to change colors do you want anything else they just mentioned you know they'd like something bright because it's spring so plan Planning wise, everything was approved Saturday night. Sunday went out, bought everything I needed to like work on it, and we started priming about Sunday evening. We primed the whole thing and then we started building a grid essentially because I built it on this little grid and all of them are kind of in their little individual square boxes. So we drew the grid out, our brains were not working. We like started drawing this whole grid and we ended up having to erase like half of it. Um, but we learned so much. It was just us freehanding everything. It was a bit of a struggle on Sunday. We didn't go in Monday because Monday was the eclipse and we both went to watch the eclipse more south. So we were in like the total totality zone, I believe it's called. Great experience. Very cool eclipse. We started off strong Tuesday morning. I got up early and I went there and I started drawing everything out. By the time Kaylee came, I think she came at like 12, we were ready to start painting. I pretty much drew everything that morning. We immediately, you know, hit the ground running or hit the ground painting, hit the wall painting, and we painted everything literally in a day. I kid you not, we were we were on fire. We were moving so fast because it was like, okay, we'd each do a color at a time. Like I did green first and then she did red, which people were walking by us and they were giving us the side eye, heavy side eye, because we were working with Christmas colors and I was like, what's wrong? People would be like, is it done? And I'm like, obviously it's not done guys interesting choice of us but we chose just like the biggest coverage colors and kind of worked down from there to make it easier on ourselves I guess. Once we got those two colors done I moved on to blue and then Kaylee moved on to yellow and from there we started filling out like the other actual colors so like did the little pea pods doing the orange working on like the fish and working on the oyster the oyster was like a lot of squiggly so it took a little bit more time. Glasses up top the wiggly cocktail glasses after that, you know, we just kept working away, working away the literally the whole day. We spent literally, I don't know, like seven hours painting, but it went by so fast. And by the time it's like, I want to say like two or three, the sun kind of passes over the building and you're in the shade. So the morning sun is to your back, but in the afternoon you're in this beautiful shade and like you get a bit of a breeze and it was the perfect weather to do this. So by the end of the day, we literally had everything covered. All we needed to do was the black outline. I was like, oh, the black outline will be quick. We'll come back tomorrow and do the black outline. Yeah, so we went back the next day. Wednesday, our last day, we did the black outline. I actually started doing the outline in black and then Kaylee started doing the highlights, adding like little highlights to cocktail glasses, adding them to like the sardines, the honeycomb honeycomb, the little olives, like just adding like little highlights here and there and then also brightening up the whites. So the things that were already white, she added like more lines and just kind of cleaned everything up while I like slapped that outline down, like cleaned everything up so well. I know like you should always be careful about how much black you use and you should use black very like accurately and very calculated. I think putting a thick black outline everywhere just like really really defined everything because it's cartoonish it's a cartoon at the end of the day it's an exaggeration of what objects really are we arrived at 10 30 and i think we wrapped up the outline around four then after four we started varnishing and i used varathane i did a little bit of research on what i should use i've used varathane in the past on like projects i've painted on wood and then i've like used like sealant and then i've left it outside for years and it's been fine we just gave one coat it dried so fast because it was just like like the perfect temperature for it. And in about a half hour later, we added a second coat, dried so fast. Five days later, two full days of rainstorms later, nothing, no budges, looks perfect. That's the one thing I was worried about that we're gonna seal this thing and then it's going to rain for two full days. I was a little worried cause it usually takes like, I don't know, 48 to 72 hours to like fully, fully cure. There's also a little overhang above it. So I guess it's not, per you know, it is getting hit by rain but it could be worse. And that was pretty much it. Farmer's market was on Saturday and a lot of people sent me selfies next to it which was absolutely cute. It's so cute. I love 
making public art installations and then people sending me selfies next to it. Humans are so cute and I really appreciate anyone who sends me one. It is adorable and I thank you so much because it really brightens my day. It hasn't even been a week yet and it feels much longer since we did it. That was exciting. I don't know if I'll have the opportunity to do something like this. This was just kind of an on a whim thing. They're having their window replaced soon. I'm not sure when. Essentially, they want to take it down and they want to put it back up around their patio, which I think would be really cute. It's like kind of on the other side of the building is where their patio is. So they'd like to move it. Honestly, I was like, you guys can like do whatever you want with it after if you throw it in a wood chipper, I won't be offended. You know, I knew it was going to be something temporary that they can put up. I don't think art is precious or at least like a lot of the things I create I don't look at them like it's I don't look at it like it's precious because you know this is just something I wanted to do temporarily just to make it a little nicer in the meantime overall I really appreciate Mark and Sarah for giving me the opportunity to paint over it I'm so excited and thrilled that there's been so much positive feedback about it I don't know if I'll be painting any murals in the future Will I become a muralist? I don't know. This was a fun little side quest for Kaylee and I to do and a fun way to kick off the summer. If you are in Windsor, Ontario, I suggest that you go to Maiden Lane. Even if you're from Detroit, you should check it out. It's a really cute place. My favorite cocktail on their menu is called the Amelia. Don't know what's in it, but it's so delicious. It is my absolute favorite. I've tried many things, but the Amelia is just like so good. So those are my recommendations. Also, they have these ham chips there. I do like the ham chips. Anyways, I think that's all I really have to say. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope maybe you learned something. Oh yeah, before I forget, please comment your favorite thing you saw on the mural. Mine is the sardines, I think. I think. I think. But I would love to know what your favorite is, so please let me know. I wish you guys a wonderful rest of your day, evening, whatever time it is, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!